coming up, police are searching for a man who assaulted and robbed an elderly woman. And a man has been arrested for making terroristic threats on social media. We'll have these stories and more. Your News About Asta starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Mark Mongel. And I'm Victoria Dean. Police are searching for a man who robbed and sexually assaulted a 63-year-old woman Thursday morning. Police say the woman works downtown and was walking from her car parked in the Lowndes County Governmental Building at about 6.15 Thursday morning when an African-American man grabbed her. He then reportedly held her at night, demanded money, and left with an undisclosed amount. Before fleeing the scene, investigators say the offender sexually assaulted the woman. Police Chief Brian Childress says investigators have a photo and video footage of the offender, but have decided not to release it to the media unless they can't identify the offender today. A Valdosta man has been arrested in connection to a post on social media about a bomb threat. 19-year-old Luther Ward is charged with making terroristic threats and is now in Lowndes County Jail. City police received information Tuesday that someone threatened on Twitter to take a bomb in a backpack to school. The threat did not mention a specific school or city, but as a precaution, the police department notified all local law enforcement agencies, schools, and Valdosta State University. Ward, Ward turned himself in to the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office Thursday after investigators located him and obtained arrest warrants. State data shows that Valdosta High School football coach Rance Gillespie and Lowndes County coach Randy McPherson are two of the highest paid coaches in Georgia. Gillespie is the fifth highest paid coach in the state and will make just over $111,000 this year. McPherson, the 12th highest paid coach in the state, will be paid over $103,000. School officials say they value athletic programs because they develop character, keep students in school, and create a pathway to college. Football is also a big source of revenue for local school districts. A wreck last weekend in Eccles County has resulted in seven people hospitalized. 35-year-old Raimundo Chalel died from his injuries Friday at Tallahassee Memorial Hospital. Chalel was a passenger in a Chevy Malibu that was traveling north on J. Frank Culpeper Road when a southbound Ford Ranger reportedly crossed the center line and collided head-on with the Malibu. The driver of the Malibu, uh, Philadelpho Perez, is currently in stable condition at SGMC. Alberto Hernandez, a passenger in the Malibu, is still in critical condition at Shands Hospital in Gainesville. The accident is still under investigation. Five people are without a home after an electrical fire broke out Saturday morning. Fire units were dispatched to a reported structure fire around 2 a.m. The units arrived at 405 LaForest Street and found heavy flames and smoke coming from the right front corner of the building. Firemen say the cause of the fire was electrical. About 40% of the home was severely damaged, resulting in about $55,000 damage. While some of us will be cooking up a fine Thanksgiving dinner Thursday morning, others will be running to feed the hungry. News Valdosta reporter Chris Carter has this report. Are you looking for a way to build your appetite for that big Thanksgiving Day dinner? If so, bring your friends and family out to the Thanksgiving Day 5K. The race will start Thursday at 8 a.m. on the corner of Azalea Drive and College Street. The event has a $10 entry fee. However, if you bring a canned good for your local food bank or a wrapped gift for Toys for Tots, then you get in for a reduced price of $7. Awards will be handed out to the first and second place finishers of all age groups, ranging from 11 and under to 70 and older. Registration will end Wednesday. If you would like to register or simply learn more about the event, please call 630-4977. With News Valdosta, I'm Chris Carter. Valdosta city officials have decided to impose new fees on traffic tickets. On Thursday, the council voted unanimously to create a municipal court fee to help pay for new technologies. 
The court in Varasta Police Department will charge an additional $3.50 for each traffic citation, violation of a city ordinance, or criminal action. The court will also add what officials call a reasonable fee that will cost between $6 to $10. When we return, the South Georgia Medical Center reveals results from health surveys taken in June. And the city of Valdosta issues a demolition permit for an embattled house. We'll have these stories and more right after our break. Oh, it's the ugly neck clown. I didn't even think these things worked. Hello? Oh, it's for you. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Welcome back to News about Austin. A report from South Georgia Medical, uh, South, Bo South Georgia Regional Medical Center has identified the top illnesses suffered by residents of Lanier County. The residents were surveyed in June for multiple techniques. The survey showed that diabetes ma management and education, teen pregnancy, primary care, and health care access for people underinsured and uninsured are pressing matters in the community. SGMC will use this information to help community improve on these concerns. The city of Valdosta has issued a demolition permit for the embattled Nichols House located on Baytree Road. The house was the center of a controversy in 2014 when plans surfaced for an apartment complex on the corner of Baytree and Azalea Drive. The complex would have required the demolition of the structure that local preservationists said is historically significant. The city of Valdosta denied historic protection October 20, 2014. The city permit is a basic form and does not include any details regarding the new owner's plans for the property. At 6 o'clock tonight, the Valdosta Lowndes County Parks and Recreation Authority will hold interest meetings for boys interested in joining the youth basketball program and for adults interested in coaching youth basketball. The children's sign up will begin at 6 and the meeting for adults will begin at 7. Both will take place at VLPRA's main office on North Forest Street. Adults seeking to volunteer must submit, submit a background check online. Parents celebrated reading with their children at Salas Mahone Elementary School at the school's most recent parent involvement event. Reporter Marlena Williams has more on the story. Students at Salas Mahone Elementary School are excited about reading. And to celebrate their excitement, they participated in the parent involvement event called Thankful for Good Readers in their media center. Good morning! Welcome to Parents were greeted by second grade pilgrims and Indians as they came into the school between 7.30 and 8.30 a.m. The school's academic coach and parent involvement coordinator, Ms. Ward, helped guide parents through the reading aids that are provided to the students on the desktop computers in the media center. Then they could go to the computer lab adjacent to the media center and take an accelerated reader quiz or learn more about how to connect with Home Connect where the parents can receive emails every time a child takes an accelerated reader quiz. And we also were able to feature and preview Mayan Reader with some of our parents and tell them how they can have access to millions of different electronic books and they can take quizzes with my on reader as well. Parents had a chance to see how their children are performing using the reading tools provided by the school and learn how to use them themselves. One student gave us her view on the event. We're reading here with my parents and they let us um, take tests on the computers. A lot of parents came out to support their children. To kickstart the Thanksgiving holiday, parents showed just how thankful they are for good readers. Salas Mahone has a lot to be thankful for, including good readers. 
With your News Valdosta, I'm Marlena Williams. Wiregrass Technical College is offering classes to help adults further their education, as well as to improve their English if it's their second language. These courses are provided through their adult education program. News reporter Cassandra Massey has more about the program. Wiregrass Technical College does a lot of events that cater to local middle and high school students, but they also have a program that cater to the adults in the community. Wiregrass Technical College has a program dedicated solely for the development of adults. The adult education program is designed to help all adults no matter their current education level. Uh, the process is very simple. Of course, uh, if you're at the age of 16 to 17, we consider those as underage youth. And your parent or guardian must come with you to our orientation. Also, you have to be withdrawn from public school if you're the age of 16 or 17. But let's say you're 18 and older. You have to go attend an orientation, and that orientation lasts about four hours. And during that orientation, you're given an assessment test to test your reading, writing, and math skills. The adult education program even molds adults for the future through the exceptional Adult Georgian and Literacy Education Program, also known as EGLE. It's really a leadership institute, and it's meant to train people of all various ages, because last year it went from something like 18 to 50-something were the ages of the participants. Um, this year they're giving away two years of paid technical college schooling, which is, which is great. Uh, but in the process, whoever we take there has to be a bona fide leader because it's a leadership institute. And that means I'm in a suit and tie there and a suit and a tie. Wiregrass strives to make life and learning easy, fun, and convenient for the adults in the community. To seek jobs, being able to fill out application forms. So we, our goal is to have a literate Georgia. The Adult Education Program offers different classes for adults in the community can continue their learning throughout their lives. It's never too late to learn a new thing here at Wiregrass. With News Valdosta, I'm Cassandra Massey. The Second Harvest Food Bank works with multiple partner agencies to help fight hunger all over the world. Now it has a chance to feed even more people thanks to Chicken Salad Chick. The Chicken Salad Chick Foundation is donating more than $2,500 to the South Georgia Second Harvest Food Bank. Last year, Chicken Salad Chick was able to donate more than a million pounds of food. This year, it expects to give more than 300,000 meals to hungry families across six states. We'll take a short break, but when we return, we'll have a look at our, at our weather forecast with Chandler Wilkerson. So stay with us. Body language. Without saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Here, beauty is a lot more than skin deep. For more than 100 years, we have focused on creating individual success stories. This is a place where professors are mentors. Competition is cheered. Collaboration counts. Experience is hands-on. And connections are lifelong. VSU, over 100 majors, championship athletics, focused on your success. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Things are starting to cool up, cool down here in Valdosta just before Thanksgiving. Let's take a look at our weather with Chandler Wilkerson. Chandler? Thanks, guys, and you're absolutely right. It's going to be a little colder than normal as we get a taste of some more of that fall weather. It doesn't get much more beautiful to get today as we will have sunny skies and a high of only 59 degrees. 
You're going to want to bundle up later tonight, though, as the load tonight will drop all the way to 36 degrees. So grab a cup of hot chocolate if you'd like. Tomorrow will be similar to today with partly cloudy skies and a high of just a little warmer at 64 degrees. The UV index will be at a lower rating than usual due to the cold. We will have a 4 out of 10 on the scale today. Today's pollen count is extremely low at only a .6 on the scale, again due to the low temperatures. It doesn't seem like skipping allergy meds would be an issue today. So grab a blanket and get comfortable for the holidays because that's all for the weather forecast today. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks Chandler. When we come back, we'll check in with our sports anchor, Kendra King. So don't go away. <laughs> Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back. We've had a very big weekend for football. Now let's go to Kendrick King for our local sports update. Kendrick... Thanks, guys. The 6A football playoffs are heating up, but could the Vadasa Wildcats take the heat? They will have to prove it against the undefeated Grayson Rams to move on to the third round, but that didn't quite happen as the Wildcats took a harsh loss in Logansville that ended their playoff run in round two by a 54-21 score. Vadasa couldn't win the battle in the trenches, giving up a whopping 328 yards rushing to the Rams. So Title Town's run is officially over this year as both Lowndes and Bardosa have been eliminated from the playoffs. Now, in university sports, with an amazing leap of faith by Cedric O'Neill, the VSU Blazers won 61-59 over Carson Newman. With the Blazers trailing for most of the game until the fourth quarter, O'Neill's touchdown runs, freshman quarterback Roland Rivers, and quarterback Hiller's passing yards helped the Blazers come back in the game. Greg Dent made the catch and dived into the end zone, winning the game for the Blazers. The Blazers record stands at 9-2, and two, and they will, get ready, they will get ready to get another shot against West Georgia on Saturday at noon in Carlton. The Lady Blazers ba basketball team won 83-37 against Trinity Baptist. The Lady Blazers took off with the lead in the first quarter and never looked back. With the Eagles turning the ball over 21 times, the Lady Blazers took advantage and turned that into 34 points. They also dominated the, in rebounds. Freshman Sunshine Walton was a key player that night, scoring a total of 14 points and 16 rebounds. As the Lady Blazers celebrate this victory, they prepare to go against the Albany State Golden Rams tomorrow night. Tyra Holloway represented Vidalsa State on Saturday as she made history for being the, being the first female cross-country runner to advance to the NCAA Division II cross-country championship. She finished 174th out of 247 with a time of 22 minutes and 54.8 seconds. The sophomore concluded her awesome season with her best time in two weeks ago, two weeks ago, 22 minutes, with 22 minutes and 29.71 seconds at the NCAA Region Championship. The, the Blazers volleyball team fell short in the GSC semifinals against the Lions. Losing 0-3, the Lady Blazers led the set three times, but the Lions quickly took over. Both teams were even in the third set, but the Lady Blazers made, the, made many forced errors, and the Lions took the victory. Finishing the set 25-17, to now the Lady Blazers must wait until the, D, the D2 volleyball selection show makes their final team selections tonight. That's it for our sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Kendrick. After the break, we'll learn about how creative the Boys and Girls Club are. So don't go away.
up on sex don't give up on birth control either there are more methods than you think find yours at bedsider.org and we're back with news valdosta the boys and girls club will be showing off all of their creative abilities in december the vsu art education students are leading a reception to celebrate the boys and girls club student art the art is a result of the fall 2015 art explorations program the reception will be held at the Turner Center for the Arts on Thursday, December 3rd from 5.15 to 6.15 p.m. Light refreshments will be served. Thanks for watching our program today. I'm Mark Mongel. And I'm Victoria Dean. Join us again tomorrow for more local news.